Okay, that's an interesting web. Um, Amelia, hold this camera real quick. Yep. If it is what we're thinking it is, what are the odds that it's actually in there? 50-50. All right. So the idea is I basically need to try and convince, if the spider is home, I need to convince it that there's an insect stuck in its web. No. I see it. I see it. I see it too. It is one. No way. That was one. Yeah. It bit the crap out of the stick though. Yeah, it did. What you're looking at here is the first known footage of a new species of funnel web spider to ever exist on the internet. Described in 2024, this spider has a dark secret and maybe one of the most venomous arachnids in the world. But to find out if it's truly one of the spider bites to worry about, I need to track it down in its native habitat the spider we're after today is one of the Colombian funnel webs in the genus Linotheli. There's almost 70 species spread across Central America, South America, and the Caribbean, and they're actually really cool looking. They're like super colorful, lightning fast tarantulas that live in these funnel shaped webs, which is where they get their name. And like their name suggests, they are indeed related to the deadly Australian funnel webs. So we all know the Sydney funnel web. This is the deadliest spider on earth in terms of confirmed human kills. They come across people a lot, they have a pretty bad attitude, and their bite is serious. The Sydney funnel web has a neurotoxic venom. It's attacking the central nervous system of the things that it's biting. And what this particular toxin is doing is it's actually turning the nervous system off. Typically, this is used for subduing its prey. It's killing insects that it's then eating. But it just so happens that the receptor that their venom targets in insects also exists in the nervous system of primates. Things like monkeys, apes, and yes, humans. In fact, it's kind of weird. The funnel web venom is really bad for primates, but it doesn't affect other mammals nearly as badly. A cat, a dog, a koala. If those things got bitten by a funnel web, they'd probably have some local pain and swelling, but they'd be just fine. But for some reason, the Australian funnel web spiders have a venom that uniquely attacks the primate system. So why does this matter in the context of our Central American spider on the other side of the planet? the Colombian funnel webs are the closest living relatives to Australian funnel webs in the Western Hemisphere. And while being related to another spider does not necessarily mean that you're also going to be dangerous, there is another group of Australian spiders that is even more distantly related to funnel webs that has this same venom effect. And that is the mouse spiders. The mouse spiders look kind of like smaller but bulkier funnel webs. And many species of mouse spider have been confirmed to also have similar toxins that attack primate physiology in a unique way. When we see this happen, it seems to suggest that this venom toxin is actually an ancestral trait. So it's kind of like the mouse spiders and the funnel webs are distant cousins. They have the same great, great grandparents. So they're related, but not super close related. And because both of them have this venom toxin, we would expect that their great, great grandparents also had this toxin. In the case of the Colombian funnel web, they're even closer to the Australian funnel webs. Instead of just a shared great, great grandparent, they have a shared grandparent. So where the mouse spiders are like a distant cousin of the funnel web, the Colombian funnel webs are like a close cousin. In fact, they used to be considered part of the same family. So there's a pretty good chance that if the funnel web's distant cousin is highly toxic to humans, their closest cousin is probably very toxic too. These spiders lurk deep in the rainforests of central Panama. I'm joined by my good friend Emilio, a wildlife educator and field biologist as we embark on a mission deep into the Central American jungle in search of a potentially very dangerous spider. Our journey takes us to an eco-lodge deep in the mountains along the Caribbean coast. Normally a retreat for bird watchers, we got in contact with a director, a prolific herpetologist named Abel Batista, in hopes of finding out more about our spider. He is principally an arachnologist, so he is right now documenting some of the arachnids with the most toxic toxic in the world. But what he wanted to see today, in contrast, is an arachnid that they call the Linotelli. Yes, it's my brother. I don't know. I've seen some there, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Abel didn't know much about our spider, but he had seen them before. We did a scouting hike when we first arrived, heading down to the stream-fed pools and poking around to see if we couldn't find any webs. 
We saw plenty of webs at the bases of trees, but none of the spiders would come out. Abel told us that they came out well after dark, and that there'd be quite a few of them. The only thing left to do now is wait. You're probably wondering, why bother? Why go after a dangerous spider in the middle of nowhere in Central America? Spiders are the source of fear for a lot of people around the world. I should know because I used to be afraid of spiders once upon a time. Working with these creatures for years, I've been able to build up to the point where not only have I been face to face with the deadliest spiders on earth, but I have been hands on with the three most dangerous spiders in their natural habitat. The reason that I do this, the reason that I push these extremes is to show that spiders are not these bloodthirsty monsters. They're not something that we need to be worrying about. After conquering the world's deadliest spiders, it got me wondering what else is out there. For as many spiders that we have sequenced the venom, for that we have studied, there are thousands of spiders that are relatively unknown. These Colombian funnel web spiders are one of the first groups on my radar of spiders that might be extremely dangerous, but are so understudied that no one really knows for sure. And that question is what brings me out to the middle of nowhere, to these dense jungles, to find out what toxic secrets these spiders are actually hiding. Well, night's fallen. It's also surprisingly cool now. It's gonna be very interesting to see what's moving in this temperature and at this time of day. Got a chance at eyelash vipers, got a chance at wandering spiders, got a chance at funnel webs, all kinds of good stuff, so. I don't know what you picture when you think of hiking in the rainforest. Maybe you think of like a nice paved path that just happens to have crazy jungle on either side. Let me tell you, it, it's not really like that at all. There's a trail, but it's kind of like single track dirt. And the thing is, it's a rainforest, so it's constantly wet. So this single track dirt trail is actually really six inches of sloppy mud. The best way I can describe hiking in these conditions is a muddy slip and slide. Now our guide is taking us down to the stream. We're really just kind of looking for whatever might be out here, but he tells us that he's seen these spiders once in a while while he's out working on the trails out here. And you know, Emilio and I had seen a couple of the webs on our scouting hike earlier today. So we figured we might see one or two, but we get down to the main creek. And when I tell you there are thousands of these spiders, it is insane. This is the first shot of them on the internet in the wild. Everywhere we turn, there is another one of these crazy little funnel webs just sitting on its web, looking at us. Which, of course, makes our job easy, right? Not really. These things are wicked fast. They teleport back into their webs. But even just seeing them out here, I'm learning more about the spider. I'm learning more about what makes these animals tick. And what's crazy is the way they use space is almost more like the way black widows use space in places like Arizona. In some of the desert canyons in Arizona, every single crevice that has enough space in the rock for a spider to hide has a black widow in it. It seems like every single crevice in the roots, in the rocks, Every single nook and cranny of the rock walls along this creek has one of these funnel webs in it. We don't know a ton about the venom of these funnel webs, but we do know that their toxicity is similar to that of a black widow. We've run lab tests on the venom of a few species, and we found there are a couple of components of their venom that are like super, super crazy toxic, but the overall toxicity of their venom is around the middle range of what we'd expect from a black widow spider. And given that this is a much larger spider than a black widow, I would expect the bite to probably be on par, if not worse, than many of your widows. I think that it is safe to say that these Colombian funnel webs are probably a medically significant spider, but it's super interesting to see that their ecology mirrors that of the widow spiders. Like desert widows, these guys are sticking to the areas where rocks and roots create these crevices in the slopes along the creek. And this gives them enough structure to build that funnily tangled web. I'm not sure if they're eating anything specific out here because we actually tested to try and lure some of the spiders that had darted in their burrows. We tested a few different types of insects to try and lure the spiders back out, but the webs didn't seem to be particularly sticky. So a lot of the insects were able to escape pretty quick. The only time where one spider seemed a little interested was when we threw a moth in. And instead of the moth struggling in one spot, the moth bounced off of several different strands before it flew away. 
and that seemed to bring the spider out a little bit, but not far enough for us to catch it. The speed of these spiders, the venom of these spiders, and just the locations that they're building their webs, it makes them almost impossible to catch. So we're getting lots of footage of them sitting out, but we're not able to actually get close enough to really get hands-on, which is annoying. It's really easy for time to slip away from you in the Central American jungle. This is one of the most biodiverse places on Earth. And everywhere you turn, some other nighttime oddity is staring right back at you. The trills of glass frogs filled our ears as we walked carefully along a rocky stream, watching our feet so we didn't accidentally step on a lancehead viper. We couldn't push too late, as we had another extremely unique target we were going to come back for in the morning. Eventually, catching the creekside funnel webs proved to be impossible. They were too well tucked away, and their burrows ran deep into crevices we couldn't reach. The spiders were too fast, and their bite too serious to risk digging them out by hand. We'd been bested. Our guide led us back up the trail towards the lodge when we noticed a web glistening at the base of a tree. All right, so I got one shot at this. We've been hiking through the jungle, and we found a rock. And underneath this rock is exactly the spider we're looking for. We just saw a tiny one there. I'm thinking I can pull the rock maybe this way. Yep. Okay. You gotta be fast. I might need to do. Yeah, put it in your mouth. Mm-hmm. Mm hmm. <clears throat> mm -mm. It's stuck. She's pretty wedged in there but she doesn't have anywhere to go. We can actually get her if we can get in this crevice. Our guide had a pretty creative solution. Oh, yeah, there it goes. Where'd he go? I don't have visual yet. She's gotta be in here. It's like they have these escape routes, these, these hidden crevices within their already fairly hidden crevices that they can tuck into when they're disturbed. You know, I'm poking around looking to see if there's like any possible way to get her out. Along the ground, next to one of the tree's roots, I catch movement out of the corner of my eye. Uh-uh, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. You see it? Uh-huh. Yeah. What happened? Right here. All right. There. Ah. You see it? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. it's in, it's in, mm -hmm. it's in. What? Look at that. Oh man. This is the first time this spider has ever been captured in the wild and filmed. That is the Colombian funnel web. I cannot believe, I'm like shaking. I cannot believe I got hands on, or not hands on yet, but capture of this spider. Wow. We're gonna get this out of the jungle in a bit more of a controlled situation and take a closer look at one of the lesser known venomous spiders of the world. It's not the biggest, it's not the most impressive spider, but it's very, very special. Ever since I heard of it, I wanted to see it face to face. And right now, we are looking at the Colombian funnel web spider. This is a spider that has never been filmed in the wild, ever. It's very popular in the hobby. People keep these spiders all the time. Maybe not this species, but many different species of Colombian funnel web or curtain web spider. I've seen them in spider subreddits. I've seen them on arachno boards. People know the spider, but for some reason, nobody has ever worked with them in the wild. And what's also crazy is, no one knows anything about their venom or their bite. The only study I was able to find that documented their venom found that they're actually quite toxic, close to the widows in potency. And given that this is a larger spider than a widow, you'd have to wonder if this is a potentially dangerous species. Now, this particular spider is actually one that was only recently described. We actually have a rare opportunity to not only document something that hasn't been filmed in the wild ever, but something that really was poorly understood until very recently. Times like that, we have an opportunity to make a discovery with even the most simple observations. Now, what I want to do is I want to actually take the spider out and hold it in my bare hand and see how it behaves. So what I'm gonna do to handle it is I'm actually going to completely invert the container and see if it will just sit, just like that. Now I'm pretty sure this is a roaming male. Um, I can't 100% tell. I don't know if it's a mature male or not. We found this out patrolling at night. Now it was very light and the hike was very brutal and I wanted to have a lot more daylight so I could actually see 
what the spider is doing. This is a new species of funnel web spider in my bare hand. And as you can see, it's just sitting there. Now I'm watching the spider very carefully, not just because I don't want him to escape, but because I don't know what the bite would be from this animal. But the more I look at him, the more, especially from this angle right here, he really looks a lot like the curtain webs from Arizona, which are not known to be dangerous. Now they all used to be grouped these guys, the curtain webs, and Australian funnel webs used to all be grouped in the same family, but they've since been split. However, since the venom of this spider is known to be decently toxic, I would imagine that a bite would be bad. The reports we do have is that they'll cause pretty significant pain, a little bit of numbness and swelling that might last a few days. But as far as we can tell, there's no systemic effects. However, given that I think this might be a male, at least with one of their relatives, we know that the male Sydney funnel webs are more toxic than the females. And we think that's because they have to roam to go search for mates. And typically the, the spiders that are wandering around are often facing a lot more challenges, a lot more potential gnarly predators. And as a result, they need a much more potent venom to defend themselves. As you can see, I don't think this is a creature that would be very aggressive. And something I learned with the Sydney funnel web, a spider will pretty much show you what it's about in the first minute or so after being captured. The fact that this spider hasn't threat posed, it hasn't rear its fangs or anything. Um, the first curtain web we tried to capture uh, actually bit the stick that I was luring it out of the funnel with. So I know that they can be defensive, but once they're out of the web, once they're out of their element, and you're not continuing to poke and prod at them, the most they'll do is just sprint away. What's crazy is that burst of speed and the kind of biology they have, this almost reminds me more of the Agilentid spiders, the funnel weavers, which are not megalomorphs at all. This is more closely related to a tarantula and even more closely related to the Sydney funnel web than it is to the Agilentidae, the funnel weavers that you might find in your backyard. This is a spider that is still fairly unknown to science. By asking Spencer, it's probably a bad idea to hold it in your bare hand, isn't it? And for most people, I would say yes. However, we have worked with tons and tons of really dangerous species here on the channel. And one of the things I watch for with behavior is just any form of agitation. You can see right here, this is a live spider. It keeps darting off, but that's the most defensive he's ever been, is he just uses that speed to try and disappear into the grass and escape. This is a potentially highly venomous spider, but as you can see right here, it is not an animal to worry about. I mean, case in point, they've almost never been filmed in the wild, so people just aren't encountering them in their native range. When it comes to what these spiders can actually do to you, at the end of the day, we really can't know for sure. These spiders aren't like wandering spiders or Sydney funnel webs that are coming across people kind of often, and we have lots and lots of bite reports. These spiders aren't rare, but they're living in hard to access places. These spiders probably aren't coming into people's houses. They're not having these accidental encounters where they wind up in somebody's shoe. If you're bitten, I think the evidence points to them being very serious. But I think a full tank from one of these spiders would give you a very bad day and probably a very bad few days. These spiders are kept in the hobby. A lot of advanced tarantula keepers do have Colombian funnel webs in their collection. And those keepers consider these spiders to be highly venomous. They are largely considered to be a hands-off species and are treated like the medically significant old world tarantulas, like the Asian and Australian funnel webs. Under normal circumstances, I really don't know how you would get bitten by one of these Colombian funnel webs. These spiders are so weird and so secretive that if you happen to see one in the wild, you should take a minute to appreciate a fleeting encounter with a very special and very odd animal from very, very special parts of the world. Rainforest creatures are weird. And honestly, the Colombian funnel web doesn't even begin to touch on just how weird biology gets in these extreme habitats. This creature right here looks straight out of a science fiction film. It slinks across the forest floor, attacking its food with built-in glue guns before literally drilling into it with these crazy sharp teeth. If you wanna learn more about the incredible world of the velvet worm, which might be the weirdest creature from the rainforest, check out this video right here. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.